Are you ready to cue your business success? Entrepreneurs and business owners tune in to this podcast for top marketing, sales, and leadership strategies to grow and scale your business. Hosted by Michaela Quilici, award-winning international business growth coach and marketing consultant. Since 2010, Michaela has helped hundreds of business owners navigate their business growth on purpose. She has been featured in Canadian Living Magazine, USA Weekly, and Business Innovators. Michaela is also a contributing author in the best-selling book, Conscious Business, and a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. If you want to learn some tactics you can put to work in your business today to get noticed, get clients, and get profitable, listen to this episode. And if you want to move even faster, connect with Michaela directly at MichaelaQuilici.com. Here's Michaela. Hi, it's Michaela here. Did you know that the average person ranks the fear of public speaking above death? Yeah, it's true. Today, I want to share with you three critical ways to make sure that your public speaking visibility converts into clients. Getting new clients from public speaking is not easy, but I'm going to share with you the secret to making it work. So listen right through to the end. I want to share a story. I was given an opportunity to speak to a group of women entrepreneurs, my first ever presentation. I spent most of my life avoiding public speaking, avoiding it like the plague. It was my greatest fear. Yet I knew I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone if I was going to make it as a business owner. I knew the statistics were not optimistic. 50% of women entrepreneurs don't make it past the first first five years and this was year one from what i experienced growing up both my parents owning their own businesses uh, the entrepreneurial journey was hard i had to work fast i had to work fast because i had a lot of issues and personal challenges getting in my way and sabotaging my ability to be successful first off i had to get over my issues around networking sales and public speaking As an introvert, all of those three things terrified me uh, immeasurably. I knew that if I didn't figure all this stuff out, I'd be in big trouble. I was living on my own at the time, recently divorced. My father had just died from a long battle with cancer and I was grieving. I was reinventing my life again with nobody to fall back on. So I had to make this business thing work. If I wanted to step into my greater purpose and share my story with the world, which I really wanted to do, the time was now. I ignorantly thought that all I had to do was show up, do my thing, and I would start getting clients. At the time, I didn't really understand the concept of inviting people to work with me. I spent hours putting together that first ever presentation. It took me a long time to write out all the content for my speech, Um, and I was so excited to share my story with the world, to begin making an impact on the women around me and increase my revenue as well. And in the days leading up to the presentation, I began to gather more and more courage and confidence about coming out for the first time for my first ever speaking gig and from a place of choice and from a woman who had struggled with speech impediment for decades, that was a monumentous occasion for me. I delivered an awe-inspiring speech. It was a very powerful presentation. The room was packed, sold out room. The women were eager to hear my message. I felt really good about finally stepping out into this more authentic version of myself, uh, just waiting to be birthed. And I received some of the most heartfelt feedback and testimonials after my presentation was finished. Some of the attendees told me that they appreciated my courage and sharing my story. They learned new marketing perspectives and resonated with my message. Yet out of a sold out room, do you know how many clients I got? None. Zilch. Nada. I was heartbroken. I didn't get it. I, you know, didn't understand why. Was my message not compelling enough? Did they not resonate with it? Um, Am I not smart enough? I was confused. They said it was helpful, the feedback was positive, and I got lots of hugs, but no credit cards. So what happened? What happened was that I didn't invite them to learn more about what I offer. I didn't give them a reason to find out more about how I could help them. I didn't ask them if they wanted my help. I took them to the edge, and then I left them hanging. 
The mistakes that I made early on in my own journey as an entrepreneur are not uncommon. I see this a lot with women that I coach and maybe my story resonates with you at some level. I learned that it's not enough to be brilliant at what you do. You also have to learn the tools, skills, and best practices of how to convert your marketing activities into inquiries, consultations, and new clients. The phone is not just going to start ringing. People are not going to be flooding up to you at the end of a presentation to give you their credit card unless you invite them to. And getting help from somebody who's walked the path before you is a really smart and savvy thing to do. So I want to share with you three critical ways to make sure that your visibility converts so that you don't have to go through what I went through. Uh, Number one, build a bridge. Each marketing activity should have a call to action that invites your prospect into a next step with you, building a bridge into your sales process. Number two, make it compelling. The invitation needs to be compelling enough to take action from the standpoint of the person you're inviting. They need to be motivated to take the next step with you. They need to want it. Number three, deliver solutions. The offer needs to be of value to the person that you are offering it to based on what they deem to be important, not on what you think they need. This is typically a problem they admit to having and want to solve or a desired result that they wish to fulfill. If I had known there were steps and proven strategies for converting my marketing into sales, I could have grown my business much faster with much less pain and suffering along the way. I could have made more money so that I could pay myself sooner. I could have avoided some very costly mistakes and a ton of self-doubt and frustration that I felt each time I did something that didn't quite work the way I had hoped. I could have served more people, made a greater impact, inspired more lives, ignited more people into their own transformation. So what if you could achieve more with a lot less struggle? I think you already know the answer to that question. You'd get your big ideas off the ground. You'd feel inspired and energized. You'd expand your life and business exponentially. You'd in- experience a continuous flow of ideal opportunities and revenue growth. And if you could get to those results more quickly, what if then? I know how transformational that could be, both personally and professionally. So I invite you to get out of your comfort zone. Stop letting your fears make your decisions. The only difference between where you are right now and where you want to be is one decision and a few new actions. Speaking is one of the best ways to grow your business. It is a fantastic uh, opportunity for you to share your expertise, build your credibility and visibility in front of your ideal audience so that you can generate Uh, leads, opportunities, uh, opt-ins for your free gift, and uh, of course, new clients. In fact, speaking is one of the authority platforms that I recommend to my coaching clients. Uh, One of my clients in particular has generated uh, over $90,000 from one speaking gig alone. And that does not include um, the upsell opportunities on those uh, clients that she landed uh, from that gig and referral opportunities. So um, it's a multiplier effect that can happen.